right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make our Zentangle Still Life Project. So what you'll need is a pencil and an eraser. You'll need crayons, markers, colored pencils, the basics. It would be helpful if you have all three so that we can do our layering techniques. Um, and then you're going to need a Sharpie. Uh, it would be most helpful if you had a regular fine tip Sharpie and then an ultra fine tip Sharpie. I don't have an actual ultra fine tip here with me, but I have this pin and gear permanent marker that's ultra fine. So an ultra fine tip and a fine tip. All right, so it'll also be helpful if you have the PowerPoint presentation. So if you would like access to that, you can go to the description below this video and click on free resources library and enroll for free and look for this section that has the title of this project. All right, let's get started. There's also a list of this supplies on the PowerPoint presentation. It's actually a Google Slides presentation. In the PowerPoint presentation, I have included a little sketch of some bowl shape. In this project, we are showing emphasis by creating a Zentangle still life with fruit. The fruit in the bowl, if you'll see, is very colorful, mostly warm colors, and the background is done in black and white. And so what this does is it puts emphasis on the fruit still life. Also notice that the bowl is in cool colors. This will also put emphasis on the fruit. If you did the bowl and the fruit in all bright warm colors, then they would kind of blend together. So when we create emphasis in art, we wanna make sure that we are making our focal points stand out. All right. The first step in this process is going to be to pick a bowl shape. So I've made a little sketch of some different types of bowl shapes here, and you can get that off of the Google slide presentation as well. So the first thing we want to do is just pick a bowl shape. So you can make your project portrait orientation or landscape orientation. I think that for this one today, I want to do it this way. So I'm going to turn my paper in a portrait orientation. I think I will tape it still. All right, so I didn't realize the camera was not on there for a few seconds, but what I did was I looked at the bowl shapes and I chose this bowl shape right here. So when drawing your bowl shape, make sure that it's flat, okay? The bottom of it needs to be horizontal with the side of the page, even if you have one of these curved bottoms, okay? Make sure that it's symmetrical and straight with the bottom of the page. That way it doesn't look like your bowl is leaning one way or the other. So I've got my bowl shape here and notice in this these sketch ideas that I've included some light and shadow examples so that when we add color values, you can kind of imagine where your darker color values will be to make this look more three-dimensional in our artwork. So the next thing I did was I looked at some reference photos of fruit in bowls, and I found some good reference photos on Pixabay. And I like Pixabay because you can find lots of great stock images for free just to use when you are practicing learning how to draw and paint, whether you're doing still lifes or portraits. Uh, there's lots of good pictures on there to work from. Okay, so the next thing I did was I looked at the fruit and I found, I like this pear right here. And that pear is sitting on um, an interesting looking glass platter. But mine's actually going to come out of the side of this bowl. So I'm just going to make it be sitting right in the inside left part of this bowl. And... Remember to just kind of trace the contour with your eye. It doesn't have to be just like the reference photo, but it does need to look like a pear. Okay. And then when it overlaps with the back edge of your bowl, you can erase those edges. Put a little stem on it here. All right. It also has a little line where it has a a little crease, kind of a shadow area there. Okay, and then I like this green apple that's laying on its side. I liked how this apple was positioned a little bit better than the red apple, but I think I will colorize this apple to be red. But I'm gonna 
use this image of the apple and I'm going to make it kind of overlapped in front of the edge of the pear. It's pretty round and then apples have this indention here. So use your contour lines inside and out to show the form. It's going to be darker down in there and then this little stem comes out of there. So I've got an apple. Now I want to make some grapes. So I can just start by placing some grape shapes behind the pear and apple. Uh, and I do like this leaf coming out from behind this red apple in this picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this leaf in there. add my grapes behind these objects. So I'm just, I can start by spacing out some grape shapes, making some of them overlapped behind the others. Maybe this one's out in front and we can see the whole thing. And then this one is here. Maybe this one comes behind the stem. And then I can just kind of fill in some grape shapes behind. We'll be shading these a little bit darker down in there. If you want to mark some shadow areas with your pencil, that's good. Kind of get an idea of where it's going to be a little bit darker, especially on this apple right here. All right, and then I really wanted a banana in there. I like this banana that's in this digital image, but it doesn't look really realistic. So what I'll do is I'll have this banana come out of the side here, like it is in that digital graphic image. And then, then I'll look at the more realistic version of the bananas and make my stem come up here. Then it's gonna have a little broken off shape, that'll be brown, this will be a little bit green, erasing my line where it overlaps. It's going to have some edges here. Alright, so there's a banana, and then I'm going to pop an orange right back here. An orange is going to be about the same size as the apple. It's just going to be a nice round shape. It's probably going to be some shadowing coming from down in here. All right, and then maybe some of these grapes are coming from behind this leaf. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing I'll do is add a table. So we're going to want this table, this bowl of fruit to be sitting on a table. So I want you to draw a horizontal line. Make sure this comes through here. This is an implied line. Remember implied line when it goes behind a bowl, it disappears, but it needs to connect up just like it would if we had a ruler here and we were continuing this edge off the other side. Okay, so now we've grounded our object. The bowl is sitting on a table. So the next thing I'll do is I will color the fruit. And I'm gonna color the fruit with mostly warm colors. And what I want you to do for the bowl is to use cool colors. And so that's gonna create more emphasis on the fruit if you use cool colors for the bowl. So that would be like blues and purples and greens, different shades of those cool colors. Um, to do the bowl. Remember this project is about creating emphasis on the fruit. So here we go. I do have the basic marker colors here, but I also happen to have these little markers that someone gave to me. So I might use some of those. Remember that your coloring will be more interesting and more advanced looking if you will layer your colors. So you can put crayons and colored pencils on top of markers. You can put crayons on top of colored pencils. So I suggest having a piece of scratch paper handy. 
so that you can experiment with the different colors that you will overlap. So I've got this nice peachy color here. I'm not sure what some of these markers even look like. Well, that's interesting. That would be a good base color for the pear. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use this for the pear. Think about where your highlight will be and, you, and leave some white paper showing through for the highlight. Use this peachy color as the base for the orange. Leaving a little white area for the highlight. Hmm. I don't really see a good red marker to use as a base for the red apple, but I could use the peach color for the base of the red apple. Remember, I'll be layering different colors on top of here. I'm going to want some browns and beiges in the pear, so looking at the reference photo. Actually, one thing I noticed, these markers have still made the paper kind of wet, so it's not taking the colored pencil very well. So what I might do is just try to use one of the crayons. I do see some brown in the pear. And I see some speckles in the pear. Maybe put some yellow in here. All right, and I'm gonna use this yellow to put a base on the banana. And I think I'll use this green as a base for the leaf. One thing as you start to learn more about color is that when you lighten green, a lot of times you'll be more successful if you use yellows. Because if you look in nature, when you see green leaves, when they are highlighted, a lot of the times they'll appear to be yellow. Sometimes pears will have a little bit of red in them. Remember, the more color you use, the more interesting that your drawings and paintings will be. I know I'm going to have some green up on the top part of this banana. I know that the top of the banana is going to be dark. Alright, so what I'll do, I'm going to put this on a time lapse so it doesn't take as long. And notice how I'm just gonna go throughout here and I'm gonna layer colors. I'm gonna think about where the shadows would be and use darker color values, not black. I don't, I wanna stay away from using black, but use different values of your colors to create darker values. You can use blues and browns to darken. You can use purples and blues to darken. Um, so just have fun with it and see if you can create some light and shadow on your fruit. Okay, so I've got my fruit colored in. Now I want to do the bowl with cool colors. So I'm just gonna start using a cool color that's light in value 
and maybe maybe this light blue colored pencil so what I can do is just start out by putting a nice light layer of this across the whole surface of the bowl remember to keep your pencil sharp when you're shading and coloring with colored pencils do your best to stay in the same direction except when you need to turn for just a little bit and go along an edge quickly get back to the common direction that you're using all right so now I have a good base color to work with now I'm going to just stick with colored pencils for now uh, and then I'll layer some more crayons on top here in just a little bit to get a little bit darker. So going back to the diagram in the Google slide presentation, look at your shadow. Look how, look where the darkest places will be in your core shadow. Experiment with your colors on your scratch paper if you need to, to use your cool colors to get lighter values so I can use darker blues and even purples to darken the shadow area on this bowl I haven't done the core shadow yet I'm just starting to darken this a little bit I'm gonna leave it a little bit lighter over here for maybe some reflected light notice that when I do switch directions I try to go back over the whole area in that different direction and it the two the vertical and horizontal strokes kind of cancel each other out and help it to look a little bit smoother all right so just watch I'm gonna put this on a time lapse just watch me as I finish adding some different cool color values to create the lights and the darks All right, so I'm happy with the way this looks, and now I'm going to put all this away and get the Sharpies out, and we'll explore the Zentangle pattern ideas. Back in the very first week, we did some Zentangle projects, and so we're gonna incorporate the Zentangle method into this project, and we're gonna stay black and white with the Zentangle part of the project. That way, we will keep our emphasis on the colored fruit, and so what you want to make sure to do is if, if you want to go onto the Google slide, I've put a lot of Zentangle pattern examples or you can research your own. What you want to make sure to do though is we want to have a different set of patterns on the bottom. So we want this to be visually different, the table to be visually different than the background. So what I think I'll do here is I'm going to use a series of horizontal lines not necessarily straight lines maybe these lines can go get closer together maybe some of them can be a little straighter and then so I'll fill these with patterns and then in the background I will break this up into a series of diagonal shapes and I like to use a pencil just to kind of mark out the main sections of where my larger shapes are going to be. So I've broken this up in some diagonal lines and then I can also take my pencil and also break this up in with a, a swirl or something. You can put shapes in there, you can do some circles. So explore Zentangle pattern ideas and all you'll need to do then is use a combination of thick lines and thin lines and patterns. Use both your fine tip Sharpie and your ultra, ultra fine tip Sharpie and just have fun with this. Uh, get a hard surface to work on, prop your feet up, watch a movie, and relax with some Zentangle art. 
So I'm going to put this on a time lapse because this is going to take a while. And I hope that you have had fun with this. All right, so this is the end of my Zentangle, but also, um, if you want to, this is totally optional, you can take a pencil and do some shading. So if you look here, I've got some of these lines that overlap. So where they go under, I can add a little bit of dimension by shading. I'm just got a regular blending stump right here. All right, so that's always an option to do some shading. Uh, you can also come down here and put some shading underneath your bowl. All right, well, I hope you had fun, and remember, there's a whole lot of Zentangle pattern ideas and videos on how to do certain patterns and all sorts of things on the internet. If you want to, feel free to explore that further, and don't forget, if you want the Google slide presentation that goes along with this lesson, just go down to the video description and click on the free resources library link, and you'll find it in there. All right, until next time, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I post a new art lesson. Thanks for watching.